Now we got to get inside the surah, inshaAllah. So how many sections are in Surah Al-Rahman again? Five. I hopefully, hopefully I can talk to you only about the first section today. If I can do at least that much, something of my job is done. Something of my job is done. This surah is unique for many reasons. And one of them is that Allah Azza wa Jal began this surah with one single word that is an ayah by itself, but it's not from the mutashabihat. You know, alif la meem is an ayah. I don't know what that means, you don't know what that means, Allah Ta'ala A'lam. Allah knows. But, and, but that's one ayah. Ar-Rahman is one ayah. It's one ayah. But it's not like only Allah knows what that means. He taught us what Ar-Rahman means, yes? And for those of you that are students of language, Ar-Rahmanu Allam Al-Qur'an is actually one sentence. It's one sentence, Ar-Rahmanu Allam Al-Qur'an. But Allah broke it up. So Allah took one sentence and put it in two ayat. Why would He do that? You don't do that in English class. You don't do that in English class. You don't say Allah, full stop, created us, full stop. If you do that, your teacher will mark you wrong and you say inspired by Surah Al-Rahman at tabaram <laughs> You know. You give Dalil for your... <laughs> it's not going to work. Trust me, it's not going to... I tried. It, it doesn't work. Okay. But let me tell you why Allah does that. One of the reasons Allah does that, Allah tells us Himself in His book, He says, So people could do deep thinking about each and every one of His ayat. If it was one sentence, then we would think about the whole sentence as one ayah. But Allah wants me to think about it and you to think about it. He wants us to think about just Ar-Rahman by itself. Before you think about Allam Al-Qur'an. You should not think about Allam Al-Qur'an until you stop and reflect and think about just Ar-Rahman. We would not have stopped and thought about Ar-Rahman by itself if it was one ayah. We would have just said Ar-Rahman Allam Al-Qur'an. But he said, Ar-Rahman, stop, this is an ayah. This is an ayah by itself, subhanallah. So we got to stop too. We can't just go on. We have to stop and think about this word. What does it mean? Where does it come from? You know, we use this word all the time. We say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We say Fatiha all the time. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We use the word all the time. But what does it mean? Can anybody give me an English translation that you've read before? Ar-Rahman, anybody? Merciful, uh, some people use benef beneficent, right? Compassionate. I, I don't know, beneficent. Have you ever used beneficent in a conversation with anybody before? I mean, does that ever normally come up in conversation? Because if it does come up, see me afterwards, I know a psychologist. You, know, you, <laughs> you don't normally use the word beneficent in conversation, yes? The purpose of translation, the purpose of translation is so you and I can understand. And translation should be with words that you can actually use, that you actually relate to. If you translate with words that you can't relate to, then it defeats the purpose of translation. It defeats the purpose. And the other problem is the, the easier word is merciful. Merciful is easy to understand for most people who understand English. They know the word merciful. But the problem with the word, there's also a problem with this word, is that it's actually different from the word Rahma. Mercy is different from the word Rahma. And I first want to explain that difference to you. A Rahma in Arabic comes from a few things. One of them is a Rahm. A Rahm is the stomach of the mother. When a woman is pregnant, her stomach is called Rahm. And it's called Rahm because that baby is taken care of in every way. A Rahm is uh, 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 the, the child inside the raham of the mother is taken care of in every way. Now there's a relationship between the mother and the child. Does the child know the mother? No. Does the mother already know the child? Something about that? Does she already have love for the child? Does the child have love for the mother yet? No. Is the mother taking care of the child already? Yes. In every way. In every way, the entire world of the child is taken care of by the mother. And the child has no idea. 
no clue that he is loved so much that the mother is willing to do so much for this child and protect it from every danger protect it from every danger you know the the, the uh, uh, normally human beings when they protect themselves when they protect themselves we protect our head we protect our bodies but a mother before she protects anything else what will she protect her stomach when she's expecting she's going to be extra careful not to walk in a narrow place or to stay away from corners at the table you know she's going to take extra caution that word gives birth to the word rahma rahma is not the same as mercy because mercy in english is used when you spare someone like for example I was going to beat you up, but I showed you mercy. Which means you were expecting punishment, and when I decided not to punish you, that means I showed you mercy. Maybe a police officer stops you on the road. The policeman comes over to you, hey, you don't know the speed limit? No, I, I was reciting Surah Al Rahman. Uh, sorry, I just. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll show you mercy. No ticket for you. I don't know if that's going to happen, don't try it. But you were expecting punishment, yes? You were expecting a ticket? And then you use the word, oh, he showed me mercy. Meaning he let me go. In other words, in the English language, most of the time when we use the word mercy, we're actually thinking about punishment. And then the punishment went away and we thought about mercy. But the word rahma has nothing to do with punishment. The word shouldn't even cross your mind, the thought shouldn't even cross your mind. It has to do with complete care and love. Someone who shows you rahma is someone who has ta'attuf and riqqa, like Lisan al Arab ibn Mandur, the lexicon of the Arabic language, he argues. Someone who has compassion towards you. Someone who wants to be soft and easy with you. Someone who wants to make things delicate for you. They understand that you should be handled with care. You know, there are people who deal with other people delicately, nicely. And then there are people who are not very delicate, not very nice. Sometimes you want to get a visa to some country and the person you have to deal with is not very nice. They don't have riqqa. But if they have rahma, they treat you with respect. They start with salam. They say, I'll do everything I can to help you. And you can notice they care about you. You're trying to do hajj or something and they care about you, you know. They're showing that riqqa. That's rahma. Rahma is to show love, to show care, to be sensitive. When Allah calls Himself Ar Rahman, He is saying that He loves you. He is saying that He cares for you. He's saying that He understands that you are very delicate and you must be handled with care. And Allah will take care of all, every matter that you have. He'll be very delicate in your case. He's not going to leave you, He's not going to abandon you. A mother would never abandon her child. Even above and beyond that, beyond imagination, is Allah Azza wa Jal when He calls Himself Ar Rahman. But another thing here is Ar Rahman, the word itself, is what's called Sigatul Mubalagha in the Arabic language. What that means is something that is excessive and unusual. Like if you are thirsty, if you are thirsty, that's one thing. Or if you're angry, that's one thing. Ghadib. Even atish, if you're thirsty. But if you say atshan, that means you are dying of thirst. That means if you don't drink, you're going to die. You could not be thirstier. Any more thirsty than this and you will be dead. Ghadib is angry in Arabic. When you say ghadban, that means if you get any angrier than that, you'll explode, man. Your head will pop off your body. You know? Allah says ar-Rahman. You know what that means? You cannot be more merciful than that. That is the nth, the most extreme, unlimited form of mercy. Extreme mercy, beyond imagination. The other thing that comes from the language of this word, Ar-Rahman, because it's Sigatul Mubalagha. The origin, some grammarians argue, of Mubalagha is Ism Fa'il. What that means in simple terms for everybody here, I know not everybody is an Arabic student, is that it is happening right now. It's happening right now. It's one thing to say Allah cares. It's one thing to say Allah is loving. It's one thing to say Allah protects. But it's another to say Allah is protecting me when? Right now. He's caring about me right now. He's concerned with me right now. He is delicate with my situation right now. That is the realization inside Ar Rahman. It forces me to think and it forces you to think. How is Allah showing me love right now? Immediately. 
Not tomorrow, not later. Every one of us has problems. Every one of us. Maybe you have family problems. Maybe you have husband problems. Maybe you have wife problems. Maybe you have children problems, parent problems, in-law problems, boss problems, worker problems, government problems, immigration problems, economic. You got problems. And we think about our problems all the time. And we don't think about Ar-Rahman all the time. We only think about the problems. We don't think how many problems Allah saved us from. Somebody gets allergies and they complain about their allergies, but they don't think the nose is still on my face. That's Allah taking care of you, my friend. There could be so much worse. There's so much worse that can happen. When a child is born, how many things can go wrong? For those of us that have healthy children, we complain about the grades of our children. They don't pay attention in school. They don't do their homework on time. They com parents complain and complain and complain. If you say, what do you, what do you say about your child? You know, and they'll give you a list of complaints. You know, doesn't go to sleep on time, talks back, doesn't finish dinner, watches too much TV, video games all the time. You know, this, that is a long list. But you know what? If you ever talk to parents who lost a child, if you ever talk to parents who lost a child, you know what they say about their child? They never say he never did his homework, he was always late to school, he always ate too, too little, he was always watching TV. They say, my child was perfect. He was so perfect. He was the best. They only remember the good things. Why is that? A day before you were complaining. You were yelling at him. Because that's human nature. We don't appreciate the things that we have until they're gone. When they're gone, we remember. Now, right now, we're not thanking Allah. We're not realizing how much love He's showing us by protecting our children, by taking care of our family, by giving us our parents. Yes, your parents get angry at you. That's okay, it's a global phenomenon. <laughs> they get angry at you. Those of you that are teenage boys, your father gets mad at you. It's gonna happen. He's gonna yell at you. Anyway, my dad, it's, he does not understand me. He doesn't know. He's always angry. But you know what? Alhamdulillah, he's alive. Alhamdulillah, you have an opportunity to show sabr to him and respect to him so you can earn Jannah with Allah. If you want to know if you're humble or not, see how you are to your parents. If you have an attitude with your parents, don't think about Islam. You're, you're not ready for like what Islam demands for your personality. Allah wants us to be humble. But humble does not mean you, you make salat like a perfect believer, but you show attitude to your father and your mother. Come on. That's not humility, you know. تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ نَجْعُلُهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا The last home is built, by, built for people. Allah says we made the last home for people, Jannah for people who don't want to act up in this world. They don't act like this in this world. They don't show attitude. We have to learn to be humble to our parents, even if you think they're unfair. Even if you think they're unfair. That's part of appreciating the mercy and the love of Allah Azza wa Jal in our lives. This is something that one should think about every day. Just stop at Ar-Rahman. Just stop. And just think, what, what does that mean? What is Allah doing for me? How is, you know, the fact that, for example, it was a dream in my life, I wanted to come to Malaysia. I wanted to, I want to see the Muslims in Malaysia. Alhamdulillah, I'm so happy. I can't thank Allah enough for this opportunity. And just if you reflect about this, I'm on the other side of the planet from where I live. You know, Talking to you folks. Subhanallah. How, how does this happen? This does not happen except by the rahmah of Allah. How many things can go wrong on an airplane that's flying over the oceans? How many things? You see a little bit of turbulence and the taqwa goes up, right? <laughs> right? The, the, the plane goes down and the iman goes up. That's like how it works. <laughs> you know? Subhanallah. That's his care. He cares. And he cares about every one of us like that. Sometimes people get depressed. Allah doesn't care about me. Why do I have all these problems? You haven't thought about Ar-Rahman enough. You haven't thought about that enough. You don't have to wait for his care to come. It's already there. It's already there.